Hi there again. Let's continue with our power view uh, <coughs> tutorial. So now let's move to the second one. Okay, so this is a 2D case. No, in previous it was 3D, but we have seen that post process is very much the same. But in this case, the interesting thing that I want to show you is just some uh, unsteady post processing. So just go down to your training material, just extract the case. And basically, what we have is this case, you now the classical. Uh, voltage chain cylinder that we use a lot. Okay, we we really love this case and basically we have the flow and we're going to see things now in, in motion. Okay, so it's red, it's easy. Okay, we have done it previously in the tutorial, but now we're going to show you some new additional features. So let's start uh, extract this. So voltage shedding, extracting. So what I want to show you also that we converted here the solution, the one from an open phone, to uh, another format. It's called the Exodus format. So here we have this whole open phone solution, but in this format that is compressed on just one single file. Instead, the output of open phone, you have all those folders. So it's pretty much the same, nothing changed, okay? And as you saw, see that we have three states there with <clears throat> what we were doing. So let's see what we have, okay? So we go into the voltage shed and just track everything. And now, let me launch here. Let me use, for instance, Patafon built in. Okay. So you can use Patafon, Patafon built in or Paraview. Okay. Pretty much nothing. Okay. Well, okay. <laughs> yes. Something that here doesn't work Patafon. Okay. Or Patafon works, but remember, we're not opening the, the file, the open, the open phone file. So let's use Paraview. Okay. So it's just pure part of you. Okay, but you can use also part of them, but you just need to unload everything. So part of you and let me load the state. So we have three states and let me load the first one, state one. So remember in your case, you will need to choose the, the, load, the right location. Okay. So you will have these two prefix for it. So it's a, my case is okay, it's fine, but in your case, you will need to show. So here, what, what I want to show show you is that this is a the file, the input format is different, but you see post-processing is, is pretty much the same. The only thing that, that will change here now, variables have different symbols here, you now the, the Exodus da data uh, converted now differently, but it's the same as you use inside, probably symbols will be different. You also will need to extract blocks, see that you have the blocks here. So the same idea applies here, okay? So if you want to extract from the specific blocks and everything, <clears throat> just select that. So if you haven't used the filter, annotate time filter, this will annotate the time. So as usual, you go here and you have it somewhere here, annotate time filter, you put it there and you will have some options, okay? So what I want to show you here, that also we can compute gradients we have seen that so again just to remind you you go here alphabetical you can compute the gradients this case gradient you i want gradients compute vorticity part of you and we can compute with the one that we have in open from this case q criterion we don't compute it and in 2d you you don't use it it's better to use vorticity q criterion just use it in 3d and you have your or, or, or other options but what is interesting is that here we can also compute temporal statistics so see that we have now in the pipeline browser you have we have it here so be careful that this option also can be time consuming because you, you need to compute the temporal statistic again you compute temporal statistics of whatever you have in in your solution what you save from open phone again it's better to to get those statistics from open phone but for some reasons you don't compute it and you need to get it from your output you can compute it like this so see that now here it gives you probably a little bit more than what you can get in paraphone so paraphone you get average Okay, but here you can get compute minimum, maximum, standard deviation, okay? And then the product, the fluctuation, you can also compute it, but you need to get here a calculator. But here you get, you get the basic descriptive statistics, okay? So all those fields will be available here, okay? So what is cool here that see that now here, the original fields that you have here, so the original solution, you will have vorticity, U, P, okay? And your shear stresses. As, in the, as soon as you compute your statistic here, that those fields, the primitive fields, will disappear. Now here you will have only the, the your descriptive statistic. Okay, so you get average here. Okay, 
So nothing changed, okay? So remember, you want to access your inner field, go here. Here you will have only the statistic. And see here, the gradient, it is applied just in the original field. If you want to apply gradient to temporal statistics, just add it here. So you will see like fist filter, gradient filter, and you have it there. And tem temporal statistic, okay, you select this one, you hit, you, and then you compute the statistics of all the time solution you have. Again, you go here, alphabetical, temporal statistic, somewhere here, okay, so you have many options, so see that you have it there. So what is interesting, what, what, what I want to show you as well is that uh, I go here, and here we're visualizing verticity. Okay, let me change the range of it also we haven't seen. So you change there from minus two to two. Okay, if you press play, you have the vorticity field there. So one of the things or confusion is again that when you run simulation, when do I stop? So we have seen that you can compute the forces, everything, and then when they are when they are already you know they reach a periodic behavior, you can you can stop. But that is getting that quantitative no go value the forces but also you can do it from a qualitative point of view from your solution so you can compute the average and then when you see that the average is not changing anymore you can stop okay so you have your quantitative or qualitative value so here you see that you are looking at the instantaneous value so actually let's look better at, at velocity okay so as you play you see that the velocity at the beginning Okay, instead, then you have the onset of the instability and you have the oscillations here. Okay, but it's difficult to judge is if this is you can stop the simulation, it's not changing anymore. So what you can do is compute the statistics. So as you go here, now we see temporal statistics and we compute the statistics. So here now we are filled, we are filtering those fluctuations. And let's see what happens. You press play. This is the mean value of every uh, all the iterations accumulated. So your criteria now will be that if your solution is not changing anymore, you can say that you have reached a statistically steady state. Okay, be careful. With the, 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 listen to this expression. It's statistically steady. Okay, you are computing your statistic, descriptive, descriptive statistic, and specifically the mean value is not changing anymore. Okay, so see that you can say that this is pretty much okay, very, very, very stat uh, statistically steady. Okay, so this is how you, you, you can look at that. Okay, so this is another way to, to, to judge your convergence. Okay, you have all your statistics there, you will have also maximum value of your whole complete computation. Okay, you have the minimum value, and then you have the standard deviation of the fill. Okay. So this was regarding the statistics. Okay, so let me click here. Okay. And uh, ta, 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 ta. okay, so see you have some extra options there okay so band so it's up to you to play around so this was the the, fill, the first file that we opened the, fill, the first state file so that's up in a second, a second one so let me launch again Paraview. and second state load state let me see what the i put here so okay so i know in the right the right directory okay this is nice so now here we make the sense a little bit more complex. So what we have again, we're visualizing now, we're going to visualize just, I think the, we're going to use, I think there is an extract block somewhere, or we're going to visualize here the field, and then we're going to compute a uh, temporal statistic, but see that we're plotting over a line in a pro location. Okay, the same stuff that you can do with, with Open fund, you can do it also here, okay? And then also you can visualize how the solution is changing in time. So look at that, this is time consuming, okay? See that it's opening the file, it's computing this temporal statistic that as I mentioned, can be time consuming, then all these gradients for all time step. So it takes it, it, it takes some, some, some toll to, to do this one, some toll of computational resources. So let's wait a little bit, let's see what happens here. Okay, so we have all our post processing and see what we have. So here we're looking at the solution and see that we're plotting a line and I'm, I'm going to just plot whatever I want in, along this line. And also see that here I have a spreadsheet and here I'm plotting the values at one specific pro. You see this is fear here. So we're probing here and then I'm plotting 
the solution here, okay? We we'll plot over over a time. So see that as you press play, it's very cool, very nice, very animated. So this line here represents your current time set and how the solution is advancing. So the colors that you see here, it is just the sampling that we're doing velocity and pressure. So let's see how we do this, okay? So this probably there are another new filters that you haven't seen. So let me close here and close here. So we start from this original view. Okay, so close here, close here. So annotate time filter. So this is your original field. You put it there. Then temporal statistics is you want your statistics. So okay, see that I'm visualizing this one and it's com it is computing all the statistics. Okay, so it's a little bit can be a little bit time consuming. Okay, so be careful. That, that will take some time. So we don't want to work with this one. See that here we compute gradients in the original field. Look at the 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 tree okay so whatever and then now that we have here some information okay so we start to plot plot over a line so you have it here so as you do this one you need just to give coordinate you see here the line probably this is the line okay so give coordinate and then you plot in that line okay so you know your domain you know how to do it so in this case let me go here and see that this is the line that I'm putting here in this cut plane, in 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 this in, in this uh, in this part of the domain. In this case, uh, boundary boundary patch. Okay. So now what we're doing is just plotting the solution in this line, and you will have that information available for 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 post processing. So how do we visualize this one? So now that you have the, if you do it from scratch automatically, you will have the window here that will open, but I will show you how to open that window not so manually. So you create a new view here, and then you want to plot over a line, but we want a line chart view, this one. You select this one that we want to visualize this and see that we can access, you click here, it's the valid view, let's move. And see that now you have all the fields. So see that valid view and now selecting this one, you move here and you will have the options for what you want to see. See that you have all those fields. And let's say that I want to see velocity and see that you have here. So velocity magnitude. And probably let me see also vorticity magnitude. Okay, so see that you can press now play and then it will start to move here and see that it start to measure that velocity here and you can see the wake where where is the wake going okay so verticity velocity you can also fix the axis here so let me stop here you have all the options here so here is moving dyn dynamically but you will have all the options here it's okay the title of the axis is you want to change the access swap axis you have all the options here so you can play around here okay so the color the size type of font and everything you have it there okay so i'm not going to play with those it's up to you so let me plot those velocity here and see how cool here you start to see the wake so it's okay so uh yeah so instead stop instead of visualizing here vorticity let's see velocity and we're looking at this now we're looking at magnitude and see that what we have is this. What we're looking is this information that is passing through this line. You are capturing everything and you clearly can see the wake and how the vortices are, are switching and changing you know, there. So any quantity that pass here, you that, 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 that you can access or select here and then all the quantities that you have Okay, so also remember to select there and everything that you have compute here in this tree, you will get access. Okay, so you can do the same with the temporal statistics. Okay, so let me do it. So I go temporal statistics. Let me close this one and let me compute here this. Okay, and you give here coordinates. So let me put it 10, 10 from minus 20, 20, and then let me put it in the front face or in the middle, it's up to you. So here they see that you have that line and here you have all the information passing through that line. Okay, so specifically now I would like to do the mean velocity. Okay, remember that that is applied to statistics. So you go here, you average and you have it there. So let me go to the beginning and see that you have everything. So here we have the total average, okay? 
So this is not computing instantaneous, instantaneous value. Also, we can get it how it's accumulated. So let me see. You will have an option here also to see all that accumulate and then but then you can play around with that but this is the idea and see that we have a nice average very uniform that let's say we can say that this is okay we have an average nice solution so now that we did this one uh you can export okay so let me also you can export that also you have line chart and let me put it here and let me set it just one Okay, I'm putting average in, I just want this one. You can export also this one. So you go here, right, uh, sorry, you select active view, go here, view data, save data. And then you select CFD comma separated value. Give it a name, I know I will call it test. You can save the current time step or you can say write all time steps. So you go like this, it will save everything. So let me show you, it will be a little bit time consuming. Okay, let's wait a little bit. So see that it's saving test one, two, three is the iteration now that you have the time. So this one will save 350 files. And as you open this file, is the CFD file with all that information. Okay, in this case, uh, uh, I'm saving everything, but also you can select, you can specify what information in particular you want to save. So you can save yours the coordinate of the points in that line, probably the arc length, and then the, body, the variable that you want to, to post process. But you see that now having this data, now you can use an external software to visualize. So here, my computer now is crunching numbers, see that the fan is kicking, kicking in, so it's just rerunning, saving everything. So you, you can start to see that if you are doing this one for a very large mesh, probably can be a little bit time consuming. Okay, so let's wait, it will, be, will arrive to 350, okay. And one thing that probably I haven't found an option to stop probably here, no, it doesn't stop. You need to wait until, until it, it, it ends. So that way it can be a good addition just to put any stop button somewhere. Okay, so I think this point zone 350 you have it all of them and then you can post process so now we have another option here pro location which is this one here so you can put this point and then you can pro in this point and you can put as many as one okay so here we already have it and to visualize this one the idea it is the same okay let me go here you split here you go lunch line chart and you select this one okay Okay, in this case, you come, you put the pro, we have a pro, okay, we, which is this one, this point here, okay, and then here active, the pro, but if you put a pro, you, you okay, let me split, then you can access the spreadsheet with view. You can also do it for, 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 for the line and see that you have the value in this point. So see that you have all this information here. And here is where you can choose what that da what data you want to put there. Okay, column visibility you can hide. Okay, so according to what you have there is what you are going to save in the CFD file. So if you press play, see that the information it is updating. Okay, and then if you want to plot this one, you need to do plot selection over time. Okay, so you can select this point or cells, whatever. So this selection is general. So it's this one. Okay, extract selection. So in this case, select this one. <clears throat> plot selection, uh, sorry, a uh, plot selection over, sorry, it's this one. Okay, plot selection over time, apply to this one. And now you can access this one here and see that you have all the information at that point. Okay, so specifically there you're going to have, okay, so see that you can, in X, you have time, okay. And then you can select, let's say, I want just to see velocity and pressure and see that you have those values there, okay? So very straightforward, okay? So like that one, and then you press play, and you can see the animation there. Again, you can save the data, just gonna click there, okay, let me stop. You can directly click here or click here, okay? Both are 
or equivalent say data and then you can save that information as we did previously okay so this was how to plot that information and i think you have an idea now how to do this post process as you see it's very powerful and can be very time consuming so let, let's move to the last case which is computing forces in in part of from part of you again i recommend you to do it directly in open form but if for some reason you want to do it here or if you forget to do it you can also do it here so i will show you how to do it state three we have it here open so we re remember the forces the total forces is the composition or the contribution of the pressure forces and the wall shear stresses forces you can compute wall shear stresses here but it's very time consuming okay you need to compute the derivative of the walls and multiply by the viscosity summation so it's time consuming so do it do it in open form okay i'm not going to show you but have in mind that you can do it with no problem so see here that now here we computed drag and lift so you press play Okay, see that the animation drag and lift you have it here very cool very nice okay so then we are going to compare with open phone you will see that solution is the same there is no problem see also see that what you see here okay you see that the quality is not very nice it's not very nice okay you're missing points here but this depends of the frequency how you are saving the solution okay so that's the problem that's the one to compute a good signal here you need to save a lot of time step and that takes space and then post-processing is heavier again so that's why i recommend you just to do it directly in open fun so let's see the steps to do here so we go here because this is required a few additional steps. Let me start to hide things here. So we start from here, annotate time, extract block. So in this extract block, we want to compute forces at the walls. So you need to extract the walls. Here we have just the cylinder, one body, extract the, that cylinder, and now we need to use pressure, okay, here to compute that one, and also for wall shear stresses, okay? So as you take pressure, let's visualize just pressure. Okay, we go here and see the next step here that we have. You, we use this one, we apply extract surface. This is just to convert the surface from the format, okay, that we have it. So this was the exodus, I don't recall, but sometimes it's required, sometimes not required. In this case, we need it. So we put extract field, uh, surface. So this is just a conversion, okay, of the type of, of surface. So this is nothing nothing that uh, is strange okay so i see that you have it there and it's extract to to the boundary okay so it's pretty much the same okay so now you put it there and now you can use the filter remember generate surface normals so you put it here and when you use this filter okay again you have it here you are computing the normals okay to the surface so remember that leaf forces you will need to compute normals here here you saw so you decompose pressure in those normal so see here in this case when you generate normals you are smoothing the data here and then generate normals there is smooth okay so that is the previous effect in the in the in the airplane case we didn't see but here you see clearly that it has this effect of smoothing data okay so you put it there and then if you want to see the normals you can put the glyph and attention when you put the glyph here you need to use orientation you have many now you have normals so you put velocity you will have velocity orientation but if you put normals you have normals orientations at the nose and also be careful that in this case the the orientation of normal you can change that okay so you can okay well you have it here okay so you can use it by default is like this so if you want if you don't want the normals like this you can just put it like this so always have this in mind because depending on this you you will need to multiply by minus one now when you sum the forces okay just the orientation okay so you have these normals so what we're going to do is multiply pressure and wall shear stresses by the normals to get the decomposition of the pressure vertical horizontal axis and saying wall shear stresses so see that we have this and now we add a calculator to this one okay so as you look at this calculator now we compute leaf. How do we compute leaf? Is pressure times normals in y. Okay, so okay, leaf. Okay, we will need to decompose that one. We can ask, but okay, you have the decomposition of that one will be the <coughs> the dot product of that one, and you will give 
get only the normal contribution okay so see that this is actually the force distribution in on the cylinder okay so we have the force distribution here so here see that this is what i was telling you that in okay now we're well it also depends on the vortex shedding okay but see that here we have here positive and here negative so maybe we would need to multiply by minus one because here would be positive negative okay so be careful with your orientation but it doesn't matter it's just a sign okay you get the idea so you compute the force and see that we are adding wall shear stresses but if you want you don't add wall shear stresses here these are the wall shear stresses coming from open phone okay you can compute it here as well but it's, it requires some some uh, some operation so you can compute it like this or you put, you can put wall shear stresses okay in the same component the contribution for leaf usually is not much for drag yes it's important to add it so now you apply a second calculator here and in this one what we compute the drag force and see that in this case we have drag so your component your contribution here and see that here now we multiply by minus minus one to get the right sign in this case you will see it later so see here that we have ne negative drag here and here which is not okay it should be positive okay but just this is just a sign a matter of a sign okay so well then that after you do this one see that we have this new filter integrate variable so as you go here you can do integrals here so the integral of the leaf and drag over the surface will give you the total leaf and drag so this is the distribution no by no or cell by cell now you integrate and you have that value okay so how do you see this one because this is a single value okay so this is a worksheet and as you go here see that you go spread sheet view and then here you have it okay singular quantity leaf and drag these are your integrals okay you hide it and just so you have your two integrals here and as you compare this and with what is coming from open from the mean value you will see that it's pretty much the same value then we can do uh, more cool scenes so here we have an extract selection okay so i apply extract selection to this one we're selecting this one okay so see that extract this selection okay so you select this one extract this selection and then we can let me split here and we can do a line chart view oops Okay, line chart view of what of this one plot over time. So it's computing everything, and see that we're computing all the quantities. So see that you need to extract selection this one. If you apply the filter directly to this one, it won't work. So extract the selection, the data, all this data becomes available, and now that you have extracted, and well, you see that you need to select here copy active okay so be careful you need to enable and then that you have it you copy it will plot over selection this selection over time you have it here okay and now you have that so you select there and here you can choose what to plot so as you go here you have leaf and see that this is the leaf signal okay so if you press play your leaf and what i was telling you here is that this one you need to be careful of that sign sometimes you need to multiply minus one in this case also you need okay so minus one and see that you are only changing now the the orientation here so it's nothing changed so for instance let me go here and let me choose drag okay uh, let, let's plot both Okay, so drag and leave. Okay, so you have both, both signals. So as you go here back, see that here we, I multiply minus one. So this is just reference system. So as I raise up minus one, see that your drag now will be negative. Okay, nothing, it's nothing, nothing. It's not a big deal, just design, okay? And see that we're adding the X component of the wall shear stress. So this one you need to multiply by normals already for an open phone is coming, right? But if you have the magnitude, 
then you will need to multiply magnitude by by the orientation of the normals. So now that you have this, you can go like this, select this one, save data, you can save your data. Okay, so here, hey, let me press play and see that. Very cool, very nice. Okay, so here already in the folder, you will find in data, this is the data extracted. So it's a LD part of you and see that we have all the signal, everything from here, okay. So I see that here you can choose what columns to pull, to plow everything. So here you, you should have leaf and drag forces and the last one is time. And then you can compare with what is what is coming from, from Python. Okay, so let's do something. So now that we have this one, I hope you, you get the idea. As you see, there is a lot to do here since can be really, uh, really complicated. So let me erase all this one. So let's, let's do some, some plotting. So in data, you go there and we can, now let me go here and let me open new plot. So there in new plot, okay, you can plot, see here you have this readme file. So here you have some instructions to do the plotting. So for instance, you want to plot this side, this signal. So see here that in new plot, we're manipulating the file, the output, because we have this, let's comma that new plot will give you problems, okay? So you try to plot with this comma, it will complain. So what we do is you set search for what? For this comma, substitute with a blank space, do it globally. So we're doing this with, within new plot. So we, we are not modifying the files just on the fly. And then plot this data, okay? So let me show you here, so you do, you're plotting the output here. So let me show you now, if you erase this one, this command here, it will give you a problem with the data. Okay, see? So put that one, erase the comma, and the same with the parentheses, those blow the parentheses that it will give you problems. Okay, so for instance, here you have the command. For instance, the data coming from open form for forces, it has, it have, uh, uh, it has the, the parentheses. So see here that, look, the brackets is, for the what what you want to do and oops, sorry and you look for parentheses substitute with a blank space and then plot the data so to plot the current data okay this is the actually the, this is the compa the comparison sorry so let me go here and see the comparison so see that we have the two signals okay let me zoom here so this CD is the one coming from open phone and this is the one computed here okay so well and see that pretty much the same. The problem is that you have this, okay, here because it's the sampling frequency. Uh, by the way, here also you will see that I'm multiplying by minus one. I know the leaf, I'm I think you see my, my minus one, okay, because when I save it, I forget my reference system. So now let, let's multiply. So this was, okay, we have the drag signal, okay, nice. See here, boom, the uncertain stability, and you have it there, and then if you go to leave the comparison of both signals, okay? So see that pretty much the same, but you have this error, but this is the sa just the saving frequency. And just to show you that here, you raise this minus, is what I forgot when save, when doing the post-processing to multiply by minus five, one. See that pretty much the same, but it's kind of a out of phase because, okay, you need to multiply, you have, you have different signals, okay? So if you multiply by minus one, you solve the problem, okay? But again, this is just a sign problem. Okay, I think you have, we have done everything here, okay? I showed you also how to do with new plot that erase those parentheses and commas values that might give you problems. Okay, so I think at this point we're done. I hope you enjoy it. So as you see, small cases take some time to do in Parafone. So I guess at this point we have all the tools to do post-processing, meshing, we understand what well case structure. So next videos we start to move into finite volume method and there I'm going to give you my, 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 my recipe and some brief theory behind the finite volume method, a general theory, you know, in CFD. Okay, thank you very much and see you in the next videos, next model, and I hope you, you, you are enjoying and having a blast. Bye and see you.